first question is for uh, Dick Nichols. Um, you have gone to Concord several times speaking on behalf of the town's interest. Um, what do you see as the two biggest legislative priorities for the town right now? Um, from a financial perspective, the immediate priority is to try and get some relief on the pollution control exemption. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to Concord on Monday to uh, testify in relation to two bills that would um, do that. Um, right now we have a pending case at the BTLA with Nextera, the Seabrook Station um, nuclear plant <coughs> where um, on one level um, we've got worst case scenario about 1.6 million dollars on the line and going forward um, if they are completely successful would transfer four or five hundred thousand dollars um, onto the rest of the tax base. Um, so that is probably um, immediate future the, the most important. I think on a longer term basis um, Senator Stiles has, has taken a couple of passes in the last couple of years at looking to get some adjustments to the rooms and meals tax to reflect um, the, the um, communities, Portsmouth, Hampton and so on that make greater contributions um, to rooms and meals tax revenue um, to try and get adjustments to the formula so we get a little bit more of a share um, to cover our costs. So those are two things that immediately come to mind. Thanks. Question for everyone, and this could be a yes and a no. Um, what is your position on the petition warrant article which calls for the town to stop picking up commercial trash? Mr. Nichols. Um, can we say more than just we're opposed? He said it's a yes and no. Was, was that you all you wanted? Want, yes no? You can if you, if you okay. want. Okay. Um, I'm opposed to it. I was opposed to it um, on the Board of Selectmen's recommendation. Um, I, 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 I do think that there's some merit in looking for a compromise on the commercial trash piece in terms of the cost of it, um, seven days a week and so on, but I don't think eliminating it is the right thing to do. I am absolutely even more strongly opposed to changing trash pickup associated with condominiums, in particular ones that that's not in their condition approval by the planning board. Um, that makes no sense to me whatsoever. Thank you, Mr. Um, for Mr. Nichols and Mr. Pierce. Um, I mean, do, do, what do you think of Mr. Moore's assessment at that time, and, and why did you support a motion to oust uh, Mr. Bean as the chairman? When you're on the Board of Selectmen, there, there are five adults, and as adults, you're responsible for your own behavior. Um, I believe that I've always been um, respectful of other people and civil, um, and, and will continue to do so. Um, I, I do um, wish at times that there was a little bit less emotion involved in some of the, the disputes and conflicts or whatever. Um, you know, Ben did what he did in resigning and that's his choice and, um, you know, um, I enjoyed working with Ben, very logical guy. In, in terms of, of, of the situation with, with Phil and as the chairman, if you were to go back and, and watch the video, you see exactly why I voted the way that I voted. And, and that was simply, um, I did not feel that the entire board um, was aware um, to the degree that they should have been of some of the activities that were, were, were going on. Um, I, I, I believe that, that you're most effective as a chairman if you make sure that the other selectmen know everything that you do. And, and I've gone out of my way um, to assure <coughs> that that's um, been the case. I've gone out of my way not to make decisions for the Board of Selectmen, but for ma to make sure that they are informed. I'll, I'll, I'll make them aware of my own opinion, but to make sure that they are informed and have all of the information that I have um, available. I didn't think that that was happening. I pointed that out in the night of that discussion during the decision-making process, and I didn't feel that Phil responded um, to that, so I voted the way I voted. Incumbents, um, do you feel the board has been on a good course, and where do you vid where do you envision it going over the next year? I think if I look back, it's hard for me to focus on one year in isolation like the last year, but if I look back um, over the last several years, I, I think that in some respects things have gone exceptionally well. We, we've gone six years um, without a tax increase. The town portion of the taxes is actually less than it was um, in 2008. Um, the schools have, have, have gone up marginally, but overall taxes are, are virtually flat, less than a 1% increase over six years. I don't think many communities can say that. And at the same time, in the last couple of three years, we've resolved some issues that were long-standing issues that 
a number of attempts have been made in the past and they weren't solved and I'll give you a few examples. Um, two fire stations have been approved and been completed. The Church Street pump station has been approved and completed. We went six years with, with virtually all of our unions out of contracts from 2006 <coughs> to 2012. Five out of the six were in contract in 2012. Six are on the ballot today, and I think what's on the ballot, the terms that are there are very balanced in between the, the, the interests of taxpayers and the interests of the employees, and I'm confident that the public will see that and, and approve that. Um, having said all that, I think that I think we, there's a lot of room for improvement in the way the board works together, maybe a, a little bit you know more times uh, more time on 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 the business and the logical aspect of the issues and maybe a little bit less of the emotion and and the conflict i i, I think would um better serve us thank you Mr. Nichols. brief answers and i just uh, the massachusetts u.s senators and six of its 11 u.s representatives uh, recently sent a letter to the nuclear regulatory commission recommending that basically that the license um for a seabird station not be renewed into um they deal with their concrete degradation problem. Is this an issue that Hampton should get involved in? Um, I think it makes no sense whatsoever to be renewing a license that's got 20 years left to run for another 30 years. Um, I think that's presumptuous and I, 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 I suspect that, that, that any benefit associated with that happening um, would, would probably accrue to Florida Power and Light and Nextera and not the um, local community. So that makes no sense to me and I think anything that, that, that we can do or our, our state legislative delegation can do or whatever, um, you know, that, that we should, that's not in the public interest. Good question. Uh, yeah. Now that the old courthouse and old town hall has been torn down, uh, what would you like to see that land used for? Um, I don't have any particular purpose in mind. I think before we go considering um, areas where we might be spending our money, we've got to get our arms around the DPW infrastructure and understand what the costs are um, for that first, meaning roads, sewer and storm water systems, um, wastewater treatment plant. Um, would you support a ballot initiative to allow bars in Hampton to push back last call from 1 a.m. to 2 a.m.? No, I wouldn't support that. So I'm going to ask each of the candidates to, if they, if they would like, um, give us some closing remarks, a minute or two, uh, about why they're running, why they would like to be elected uh, as, a, uh, as a selectman to the Board of Selectmen. Off and on, the, the, the term micromanagement comes up in a public meeting, and I was kind of hoping um, that it would come up tonight so I could comment my own philosophy in that area. As a selectman, it's important to be able to dif differentiate between micromanagement and due diligence. Due diligence is the care a reasonable person would take before approving policies or acquisitions and is accomplished by appropriate questioning and thorough examination. What really defines micromanagement is not whether one is digging into details, but which details and for what purpose. Is the individual nitpicking expenses or drilling down into details to provide a perspective on higher level issues in order to get to the root cause of problems? My comments on micromanagement. During my tenure on the Board of Selectmen, I have a track record of providing leadership and success in achieving goals. For six years, we've kept property taxes flat, and the unassigned fund balance has increased from 1.7 to 5.8 million. Credibility with taxpayers has resulted in the approval and completion of a number of major projects that were turned down in the past, including two fire stations, the Church Street pump station, and a salt shed. The 2011 assessment revaluation resulted in less than 1% of property taxpayers uh, re requesting tax abatements. Since 2011, I've represented the selectmen and union contract nego negotiations. Prior to my involvement, the unions had gone six years without a contract. By 2012, five of the six unions were back on contract. All six are on this year's ballot with terms that balance employees' interests with those of the taxpayers. Going forward, addressing DPW-related infrastructure, roads, sewer systems, and so on is a major challenge. I'll continue to provide effective spending oversight taxpayers can depend on. I'll be open and responsive to residents and will always treat people with respect. I'd like to thank the Hampton Union for sponsoring tonight's debate, Channel 22 for providing coverage, and Bob Casasa for moderating the meeting. I would appreciate your support. Please get out and vote next Tuesday. Again, my name is Dick Nichols. Thank you.